The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. The content heard on the Ask Dr. Tommy O Show is for informational or educational purposes only and does not substitute professional medical advice or consultation with healthcare professionals. Hi, this is retired Army Captain Dr. Tommy O'Brien. For 25 years, I devoted my practice and military career to not only medically treating my patients, I have educated and guided them to a healthier lifestyle which improved the quality of their lives. Please contact me by visiting drtomio.com. That's drtomio.com. As an osteopathic medical physician, I am able to offer more than one would expect from an MD. I apply hands-on manipulation in concert with medical treatments to not only treat the illness, but the effects as well. Additional services I provide include medical weight loss and medical marijuana. Please contact me by visiting drtomio.com for an immediate appointment. If you don't have medical insurance or if your medical deductibles have not been reached or are very high, I offer an easily affordable membership program which allows you unlimited visits for a small monthly premium. Please contact me by visiting drtomio.com, D-R-T-O-M-M-Y-O.com or call 631-980-8200. That's 631-980-8200. And let's put you on the track to a better health and better health Healthcare at an affordable rate. Welcome to the X Dr. Tommy O Show. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas O'Brien. The X Dr. Tommy O Show can be heard every Wednesday at 4 p.m. on 103.9 LI News Radio. I offer a very affordable concierge practice which allows you access to the quality care you really deserve. With no rush office visits, you and I have the time to discuss your health care needs. As your primary care physician, it is important for me to have a baseline knowledge of your health. This way, when you come to my office not feeling well, knowing your history allows me to properly diagnose and treat your illness. Call my office today and schedule a history and physical. If you wait, it may be too late. To my military family, I got your six. To my Masonic brothers, the light is bright. Today's topic, social anxiety due to mask mandates. That's right, mask mandates. To help enrich my listeners on this topic, I invited a senior college student who attends Malloy College. Please welcome Samantha Vanny. Thank you so much for having me here today. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to get the, uh, the perspective from a, a college student, someone who's living through the, the past two years, and, and, and we're going to compare your experience going to college versus my experience. It's probably very different. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So uh, you said you're, you're, well, let's, let's start off with where, where are you from? Where are you originally from? I'm originally from Queens. Right. I grew up in the city. <laughs> and then I recently, two years ago, I moved to Long Island. Right. So I am Queens girl. <laughs> Queens girl. That's right. Well, you know, we have a little uh, a background story. I have no <laughs> mom and your sister for some time now. Yes. And uh, we have something in common. Uh, your uh, family physician uh, and, and where you grew up uh, was one of my mentors. And he was the medical director for the Daily News uh, Golden Gloves. And he was the director for about 35 years. And we both have the same background. He's an osteopath as well, but he was my senior. And, uh, well, you know, when I, when I first met him and we introduced, uh, and then, uh, knowing where I went to school and my training. And then uh, I started off as uh, on the bottom and worked my way up to one of the senior physicians. And then I would get the key, um, uh, you know, sp- very, very specific shows like the opening and uh, the Theodore uh, Foundation. Uh, it was a uh, fundraiser, all the big shows because I became the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so all right so uh so now we know where you're from and, and your background and our relationship mm-hmm. you know again i know mommy and your sister and uh, let's talk about the college i mean uh and what you were originally going for and what you're thinking about now. so originally i was going for nursing that's why i went to my college in the first place and then after COVID hit i changed my major to communications COVID really helped me realize that time alone that nursing wasn't for me. And 
I wasn't going in the direction that I wanted to go in. Right, right. Well, COVID really changed a lot of people's minds, um, those in the business and then those looking to uh, become and enter the profession. Um, two, two, and a, two years ago, two and a half years ago, uh, the first responders and the, the physicians and the nurses, we, we were the heroes. Yes. And then uh, I, last year, we became the zeros. You know, and we were being forced and mandated to have the jab, you know, to get the mm -hmm. vaccination. So from what happened from one year to the next, you know, we're kings of the hills and everyone's looking at us, for, we're saviors. And next year, the following year, you know, we're, we're the enemies, you know, and uh, that really turned off a lot in, in my profession. And I know a lot of nurses, they walked away, they walked away and we, we have a shortage. It wasn't necessarily... Um a change in that. It was mostly for me, it was realizing it takes a certain type of person in order to be a nurse or a doctor. And for me, that wasn't me. Right, right. You, it's uh, certain, certain, you know, professions have different personality mm -hmm. types. Uh, you know, some people, uh, well, I'm squeamish and I can't, you know, the sight of blood. <laughs> uh, it's not in, you know, the reality is, is that depending on what you specialize in, for, for most of us, it's not much blood. I mean, even, even when you're doing your, uh, as a medical student and then as an intern and resident, um, today, even with surgery, uh, we have minimal blood loss because the procedures are so good. We count the amount of, when we dictate, I can say we, the, <laughs> surgeon uh, dictates the amount of blood loss within the note and we're counting just like um, what we call sponges where, where you uh, absorb some of the blood uh, and very very little so it comes down to a sponge count um, so we were looking for a minimal uh, fluid loss blood loss uh, people don't realize that blood is our body and you got you know you have to the the body's a temple so you have to be very very careful even when you're drawing blood, you know, I tell my medical assistants, you, you know, or those phlebotomists, when you're drawing blood, that's someone's body, okay? You know, you have to think of it, it is part of the person, so you have to be very, very careful. Yeah, I definitely, I understand, like, the blood loss part you don't really see often, but it definitely takes a, type, a certain type of strength to have within mm -hmm. yourself in order to really take care of and help the other person right. i don't i necessarily realize i do not have that right. but um i know i'm good with people i know i'm good at talking mm -hmm. <laughs> but science and anything medical related not for me it's not for me i know <laughs> yeah. i know it, it's you know for me you know i was a typical bonehead jock growing <laughs> up you know one of the most popular guys in school everyone knew me you know i was ob in high school but science came really easy for you know i didn't really have to study and i got a's and i just knew there was a connection uh, you know, I, I don't sing, you know, I don't draw, uh, you know, I'm not a writer, even though I have two books, but, you know, I have a, a ghost writer, my, my, my boss, <laughs> my, uh, my wife, she's a very good writer. So, you know, I have the content and I'll write it down because I write scientifically and then we'll have to transpose it into something where it's, you know, someone can read it, you know, as from a reader, not from a scientific uh, journal. Uh, but uh, you go into something where, where it comes natural to you. Yeah, I, when I was little, I was told that um, I was very good with people. I'm very good at talking. People always tell me, why do you talk so much? <laughs> so I, after COVID and being by myself, I realized I'm better with people than I am with, let's say, like the medical field. Mm -hmm. So after realizing that and listening to the people around me, I finally realized communications was the way that I should go. Okay, that's good. That's good. Well, that's why you're here today. You know, <laughs> when we had that conversation, uh, we, we spoke and I asked how you were doing and you said, well, things are a little rough right now with mom. She's not happy with me. <laughs> she is not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mom, uh, you know, she's uh, you know, in school for nursing and uh, she wanted you to also help fulfill that dream as yes. well. And then saying, mom, I decided not to, uh, I want to continue my education in nursing. That was a nice conversation to have. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, so I, when, you, when, when I asked you, what would you like to do? Uh, and you were talking about communication, and I said, well, you know, maybe would you like to come on the radio with me? Maybe we can, you know, do some, uh, an internship in, in the station to see if this is what you really want. And uh, so you said, absolutely. I think, you know, your eyes widen open. Really? <laughs> and I'm like, absolutely. Come on. Let me, I'm going to see if I can give you this opportunity. I never thought I'd actually be doing this. Um, I do have social anxiety and like 
doing new things does make me nervous. So when you gave me the opportunity and we spoke for a while, you brought in my horizons and actually made me think to actually go outside the box and do something that I wouldn't normally think of doing. Right, right. Well, that's what, you know, opportunity. And that's what, as an adult, you know, say like another father or an older brother, you know, <laughs> you know, because I, I speak to mom, give a call, you know, follow up, make sure the family's doing well. And um, it's it's important to, um, to exposure, you know, our youth need ex- exposure. So there's something more out there. And mm-hmm. this is this is something that I, I wanted to offer to you. Thank you so much. No, I really welcome. appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to finish up uh, the first half. And I know we were talking about um, the social anxiety, which we're going to uh, cover the second half. But I just wanted to get a, ba- a background of, uh, of Samantha and, you know, her perspective, because then we're going to compare your perspective and my perspective of going to college and the changes because of the COVID and how it affects people's behavior. So I have 30 seconds left and I'm going to wrap up part one of that asks Dr. Tommy O show. So if you come and join my practice, let me help you lead a happier and healthier life. To learn more about my practice, go to drtommyo.com. That's drtommyo.com. Or give me a call at 631-980-8200. That's 631-980-8200. Call today, make an appointment. Welcome back to the X Dr. Tommy O Show. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas O'Brien. Today's topic, social anxiety due to mask mandates with Samantha Vanny. Samantha, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, this is important. <laughs> I wanted to give you exposure to something new. Um, part one, we were discussing you know, pretty much who, what, where, when, <laughs> why and when. I mean, that's important. So it's when you write a book, or even when you present a case, like I tell all my medical assistants who are presenting to me or medical students, I said, it's like a book. This is what you say, who, what, where, when, why and how. Um, so I just wanted to give you, you know, a new perspective on on, on things because it's more than just uh, going to nursing. <laughs> I know mom's like, no, nursing, but. If she was listening now, she'd. Oh, she'd have a lot to say. There you go. <laughs> All right. If you miss a show or like to listen to my shows again, uh, please visit my website. Go to uh, drtommyo.com. That's drtommyo.com. And go to the, the drop down, the X Dr. Tommy O show, and all my shows will appear and then you can listen to them. All right. So we're talking about anxiety, social anxiety. So let's get into, let's define anxiety and then we'll define the social anxiety. So um, anxiety is an intense, excessive and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. Symptoms of anxiety is associated with fast heart rate, rapid breathing, sweating, and sometimes feeling fatigued. Okay, so we all have experienced this. You know, there's certain situations and all of a sudden your heart rate goes up and that's where your your adrenaline, your epinephrine starts to increase and your heart rate, you're sweating. Uh, You feel like the the walls are coming in down on you. The ceiling's coming down on you. And then you get very, very uh, narrow tunnel vision and and you're not able to. I always say like we wander, you know, uh, the brain starts to wander or the brain, uh, you know, it's a mile a minute. You're not able to add you know one plus one like ah uh, uh, we know one plus one is two but when when you're in that state of mind you're not able to put things together uh so let's define social anxiety it, social anxiety is a chronic mental health condition in which social interaction interactions cause anxiety it's environmental triggers okay and here we're going to talk about what COVID-19 did to us and it's still doing to us especially with the mask mandates all right so um I, you know i have to do my reading this is part of what i do if you know as a physician you always have to be current and, and read up on, on on journals and make sure you understand what's happening new cutting-edge technologies especially in primary care as a family physician I have to have a a very broad scope of of knowledge because that's what family medicine is. So I was reading a scientific review published in the Journal of Anxiety, Stress and Coping Outlines, some of the challenges that the people who struggle with social anxiety might experience amid the COVID-19 pandemic. This study concluded that there is an increase in three areas. All right. What do you think those three areas are? 
Um, in a social setting? In a social setting. Uh, talking to people, definitely. Mm-hmm. Having um, face-to-face interactions with okay. COVID-19. We got so used to over electronics, FaceTime, over the phone, regular calls. So definitely face-to-face interactions with other people. Um, large group settings, mm-hmm. 100% with the... Now that we have to have fewer people in a setting, it if let's say like you go to a concert, you can get social anxiety easily from that. Right. Uh, where else? Well, yeah, you got a lot of the big points there. Big points. Yeah, big points. <laughs> that's good. All right. So let's uh, you talk about you were in college. So mm-hmm. your experience versus my experience, and then I'm going to go down because there's three three areas that that they really focused mm-hmm. on, which you you mentioned. You know, <laughs> with different terminology, but we'll cover that. Um, so your experience, you went you at Malloy. So being at Malloy, my first semester, I was in person. And my second semester of freshman year, we ended up, mid-semester, we ended up going fully online. And no one knew what they were doing. And turns out that lasted until sophomore year was fully online, junior year, half and half. It's very different. I don't know anyone in my school. Being in a classroom does give me anxiety now. Being able to talk to people, I kind of got used to not having to have those face-to-face interactions with my classmates. So now being in a social setting, it does give me anxiety having, let's say, group projects. It does get to me, and it's different for me now. I don't really know that many people in my school. So it is harder. Right, right, right. No, absolutely. Everything. You know, my experience, you know, again, I'm, I'm many, you know, much older than you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we didn't have to worry about that. You know, it didn't exist. And part of the social component is communicating and learning, you know, about other people's, you know, backgrounds, their cultures, and the way that they manage things. Uh, and, and, you know, the interacting, the social component that's associated with college. You know, you have intramurals, you know, on, on th- Tuesdays and Thursdays, you had that hour and a half break where you can play games, you know, uh, uh, soccer and volleyball, you know, the, those sports. And then it, then if you, you won, you can travel to other colleges and compete against those teams. Um, and you, you, didn't, you didn't have that experience. Def- I definitely believe that COVID did sort of steal my college years from me. Yes. Everyone has this idea of what college is supposed to be like, parties and meeting your friends that you're going to have for the rest of your life and finding out who you are as an individual. But COVID definitely took that away from us. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. But even in the profession, in the workforce, same thing. Uh, like uh, we lost professions. You lost your business. Even even with my business in Manhattan, I lost ninety five percent of my practice. Ninety five percent, and that's my livelihood. That's what puts you know food on the table and a roof over my head. And uh, there's no recourse. There's nothing I can do. All right. So uh, there was the three areas. The first one was hypersensitivity to social norms. Individuals who suffer from social anxiety tended to experience heightened concerns that their appearance or behavior will fail to conform with social expectations and consequently draw unwanted attention to themselves. Uh, This review uh, has shown that social anxiety is driven by the desire to behave in ways that conform to perceived social norms in order to avoid negative evaluations from others. This struggle may be amplified for, for people with higher social social anxiety because shifting norms heighten the fear of making a mistake or being judged negatively by others. The second, they found that propensity for self-concealment. This review also suggested with social anxiety have heightened tendencies to conceal information about themselves and others, including signs of their anxiety. In in addition to preventing and spreading of COVID-19, those with a social anxiety may view masks as a convenient way to hide their perceived flaws. Even in a safe environment, these individuals may feel reluctant to take their masks off because masks may, may have made them feel safe during the pandemic. 
Without the mask, they may experience greater fears than those flaws will be on full display for others, for them, the judgment. So therefore, they have a tendency to want to wear masks because they're afraid of what people will think about them. Okay, so if you're already very anxious, this is going to bring you to another level. Mm -hmm. The third was social cues. Uh, this review has indicated that the people with social anxiety have difficulty detecting ambiguous social cues. Masks make it more difficult for others to identify people's facial cues that tell us what they are thinking, such as are they are being friendly or critical or something else. So when I have a conversation with someone, I'm looking at your eyes, you're looking at my eyes, and I know there's intention. I can see that you're smiling. There's a warmthness. And then I'm saying, okay, what I'm saying, you're enjoying. If I see that you're kind of like starting to almost like you're and your eyes are getting heavy, then I'm saying, okay, I'm, I'm boring you and I have to change the topic. <laughs> well, when you're wearing a mask, we don't have that. And so people are, are have fear and anxiety due to that. All right. So uh, we have 30 seconds. So uh, if you'd like to say something, we're closing out. I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. O'Brien, for having me today. It was a real great time and hope to do it again. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, I want to give you experience to see if this is going to be right for you. All right. So uh, let me help you lead a happier and healthier life. To learn more about my practice, go to drtomio.com. That's drtomio.com. Or if you prefer to stop by my office, it's located at 250 Patchogue at Pink Road, Suite 16, East Patchogue, New York. Or give me a call at 631-980-8200. The content heard on the Ask Dr. Tommy O Show is for informational or educational purposes only and does not substitute professional medical advice or consultation with healthcare professionals. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors.